Welcome to Online Worship from Bethany Lutheran Church for the fourth Sunday of Epiphany 2021. The question in the lesson for today is, who gets to define who Jesus is? The story for today is the story of Jesus at the, at the synagogue in Capernaum, where a man with an unclean spirit decides to shout out that he knows who Jesus is, but Jesus makes him stop. Why? And who does get to define who Jesus is? This is our theme for this morning. Our worship begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare His praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. So open up the gates, make a way. say is here to set the captives free but who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow Gospel lesson for today is Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Here ends the reading. I 
Cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet My Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God Oh, praise His name forevermore For endless days we will see Peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. The lesson for today is based on the gospel lesson which I read just a few moments ago from Mark chapter 1 verses 21 through 28. One of the questions that gets asked there is who gets to define who Jesus is? It's a crazy story. Jesus and his disciples go up to the city of Capernaum and on the Sabbath Jesus goes into the synagogue and he begins to teach. And the people are astonished at his teachings, the scripture says, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. They were shocked. They were appalled and confused because of the way that Jesus was teaching. He was teaching as one who had the authority himself to declare the meaning of the scriptures. This is not what they were used to. What they were used to is the scribes who had memorized the history of, tra of the tradition, who had um, memorized the, the way that the different Pharisees from centuries before had gone back and forth over the meaning of a variety of texts. They were fluent in the tradition and they knew how the text had been handled throughout all of their history. But in Jesus' teaching, there was no history lesson, there was no religious lesson to derive some moral point about the text. There was instead an authoritative statement about what the text means, an authoritative statement about what God says in that text of the Old Testament scripture. No matter what anyone else may have said, this, says Jesus, is what it means. And then, just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. We might want to jump just to the point where there's an uh, evil spirit who tries to confuse people by telling the truth that Jesus is the Holy One of God. 
But wait just a minute, because there's a lot more to it than that. And now it gets really weird. For how long has this, been guy, this guy been in the synagogue? For how many Sabbaths did he sit there listening to the stories, listening to the traditions of the elders, listening to the scribes prattle on about how this text had been treated by one rabbi and the other, other rabbi? How long had he sat there and never been upset? How long had he sat there and simply listened? Or maybe how long had he sat, sat there and just tried to argue a bit? How long had it been? that he was just part of this argumentation process that went back and forth. Maybe he was an instigator of it, but how long had it been that he sat there as part of that, that synagogue and never had a real problem with anything that was being taught? And then he asked this question, what have you to do with us? Who's the us? Does he have a mouse in his pocket? The us is everybody there in the synagogue. He's trying to get everybody in the synagogue to rally against Jesus because of what Jesus is saying, because of the authority that he's claiming, because of the authoritative way that he's speaking the word of God. What have you to do with us? We he, people who are in the Capernaum, synagogue of Capernaum, what have you to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth. And that's an insult. You might remember that another place in scripture, there's a question from one of the uh, potential apostles uh, when his friend comes to him and says that he may have found the one who's the Messiah, that he's Jesus of Nazareth. And, and that, that uh, disciple responds, can anything good come from Nazareth? Nazareth was kind of a byword. byword. It was a backwoods place that wasn't necessarily very clean and wasn't a place where lots of people uh, ever wanted to live. It was certainly not a tourist destination. It wasn't some place like Capernaum, a fishing village on the Sea of Galilee. It was, it was something else. I know who you are, Jesus of Nazareth. You've just come to create problems. Oh, I know who you are, he mocks, the Holy One of God. And he doesn't seem to mean he is the one sent from God to be the Savior of the world. He's mocking Jesus by saying that Jesus is claiming some high priestly role because on the breastplate of the priests was written in Hebrew, the Holy One of God, or Holy to God. He's mocking Jesus uh, as being some, somewhat beyond himself, as too big for his britches. He's mocking Jesus as one who's not telling the truth and who is a liar. And he's provoked. He's just fine to, the, the man is just fine to listen to the scribes and may join in the arguments. But with Jesus, there is no arguing. With Jesus, there's no discussion. That doesn't stop him from trying, but how does Jesus respond? He doesn't argue. He doesn't try to explain himself. He demonstrates once again his authority to teach God's word with the authority of God himself by rebuking him with these words. Be silent and come out of him. Be silent doesn't quite get the depth of the, of the, or the anger that comes from Jesus at this point. The Greek word there that we translate or the, the uh, translations handle as be silent literally means be muzzled. It's like Jesus is saying to this guy, put a sock in it and come out of him. Jesus is done. There is no argument. Jesus defines who he is. He knows who he is very well. He's the only son of God sent from God to be the savior of the world to proclaim the truth of God's word against all the other false teaching of all the world. He's the ultimate prophet of God because he speaks ultimately the words, this says the Lord in his own words. Come out. And the unclean spirit convulses him and cries out with a loud voice and comes out of him. And they were all amazed. No, no surprise there. They were all amazed and they kept asking one another, what is this? A new teaching and with authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him only Jesus gets to define who he is that's why throughout Mark's gospel every time someone announces who Jesus is Jesus immediately stops them and tells them to not tell anybody even if it's one of his disciples he won't let anybody else define who he is why because he refuses to put uh, he refuses to put into someone's mind the idea that he is just a great teacher. Was he a great teacher? Absolutely. But he was far more than that. He was the one who spoke the word of God because he is, has the authority to be the word of God. He doesn't want people to think that he's just another prophet. Is he a prophet? 
Well, in the sense that he speaks the word of God itself to people so that they may hear and believe, he is the ultimate prophet. He's the ultimate word of God made flesh. But he's more than just a prophet. He's not just a moral teacher. He's not just a great teacher. He's not just some prophet that came into the world to speak to people thousands of years ago from whose words we can maybe draw some small nuggets of uh, advice for daily living. Instead, he is the son of the living God come in human flesh to tell us the truth, to tell us the truth. And that causes a problem. Have you come to destroy us? The man with the unclean spirit asks. asks. There's a suspicion in the world today that Jesus, when he comes with his words and with his deeds and with his calls to live apart from the ways of the world, that when he comes, he comes to destroy ideas, conceits, beliefs, and behaviors that people hold dear. That's why China is so, much, is so, so suppressing the Christian church these days. That's why China rips the posters of uh, pictures of Jesus off the homes of people's, off the walls of people's homes. That's why they tear down the cross off of buildings. That's why they destroy churches. That's why they imprison pastors. Because they know that the ideas that they hold, that the atheism that they confess, that the ideas about human nature that they proclaim are not true. That Jesus coming will destroy that regime. And in our own country, in many places, governmental authorities uh, trust strip clubs to operate in ways that are uh, sanitary enough to prevent the spread of coronavirus, but not churches. Why is that? Perhaps in some measure, because there are some in government who understand that when Jesus comes and proclaims his word, it will destroy what even they hold dear. So what about your own reactions to Jesus' words? Have you ever had the same sort of reaction that the man in the synagogue had? Have you ever heard a word from God and got upset? Have you been afraid that something in you needs to be destroyed? The truth is, governments have good reason to be afraid. Regimes have good reasons to be afraid. Our old sinful nature has a good reason to be afraid of Jesus. Because when Jesus comes, he comes to turn us away from sin and death. When Jesus comes, he, turns us, he comes to turn us away from all forms of evil. He calls us to follow in the path of life. When Jesus comes, he comes to destroy sin and death and evil and the power of Satan. When Jesus comes, he comes to give us life, to turn us from darkness and point us to the way of light, to turn us from walking in our own path or the path of, path of someone else so that we walk with him, putting our feet in his footsteps as we walk toward our own everlasting life. It's important that Jesus defines who he is and no one else. Because human beings will always get it wrong if it's just up to us, and sometimes on purpose. But Jesus will always tell the truth. Who is he? He's the only Son of God who has come into the world to bear our sins and to be our Savior. Who is Jesus? The Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please join me in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Holy Trinity, you are God of gods and Lord of lords. Truly, there is no God but you alone. From you and from your Son, Jesus Christ, are all things. Reveal the saving knowledge of Christ's truth to us and all the world, that loving you and one another, together we may be known by God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, whose voice was heard at Sinai and whose authority was made manifest in Christ, the prophet greater than Moses. Send faithful servants into your harvest who will be diligent to listen to your word and speak it faithfully in your name. Preserve us from false prophets who would lead us away from your truth and give us ears to hear gladly the saving words of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Guard our families and homes and build them up in love. Support parents in their task of instructing their children, strengthening those whose faith is weak, and make us bold to forego convenience and security to attest to the truths of our most holy faith with heart and action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give health and success to our president and governor, our legislature and judges, and all who serve for our governance and protection. Make them high in purpose, wise in counsel, and unwavering in duty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son cast out unclean spirits and taught with authority. He is the great physician of body and soul. Have mercy on those who are sick, distressed, in danger, or facing any need, especially those we name before you now. Sustain them with patience, trusting in your merciful care, and graciously relieve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, and whatever else you see that we need, give us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Amen.